What's up, Internet? I'll tell you what's up. I've got Tim Tams. You know what that means. No, seriously. Do you know what this means? It means I spent six and a half dollars on imported cookies just for this joke. But more importantly, it also means I got a big crazy box from Australia. Uh, so a little while ago, everyone's favorite color with two sets of repeated letters, Vermillion with two N's, uh, contacted me on my uh, Twitch stream like he likes to do. He's, he's always there. Super, super supportive guy. He's, he's really sweet. Um, he asked me, you know, do you want any of my games because I'm thinking about selling them? And my answer is, of course, yes. And he is an incredibly solid dude. He gives the best prices ever. I, I think he's probably one of the best people I've ever bought from, honestly. Uh, Ten stars would do business with again very, very gladly. But, um, you know, just, just to speak volumes about how solid a dude he is, I think last time I bought something off him, he actually took a loss on shipping. <laughs> And uh, at one point I tried to buy a game off of him and he decided not to sell it. So instead he included a completely different game for free. <laughs> like seriously, he is the nicest guy ever. Um, so case in point, he basically said, well, I've got three bundles of games I want to sell. Uh, I've got a bundle of four PS1 RPGs for about 50 USD, five Game Boy games for $10, and I've got a bundle of Amiibos which I will throw in for free if you buy the whole thing. Um, so it's it's about sixty dollars USD and that's for me about ninety dollars So it's not a small chunk of change, but There's kind of a running meme in my discord that he has two copies of one specific game that I really really want And I have zero copies of it uh, So that was included in here and the thing is the, the cheapest copy on eBay that you could get would be about double what I paid entirely for this box. So the way I see it, I bought one game I really, really, really wanted for half price, and then just got a bunch of gravy. But to, to just speak volumes of how solid a guy he is, you know, he, I, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll pay a pal you the money. He's like, whoa, whoa, you know, let, let me go to the post office, you know, get all that stuff sorted out, you know, figure out how much it's gonna cost, that sort of thing. You know how it is, logistical stuff. And it's like, okay, you know, I, I have to figure out how much extra money I gotta pay you for shipping and all that. And the next week he just messaged me out of the blue and he's like, hey, sent you your package. And I was like, uh, I haven't paid you yet. And I, I didn't really know what's going on. And as you can see by this giant wall of, of stamps and the fact that some of them are like $1.50 each and stuff, and this one's like $2, they're, they're expensive, $2.50. I think he probably ended up spending more money than I paid him. For, for this stuff, so I'm getting into contact with him just to see how much he paid so I can pay him back for that because Seriously, he didn't quote me extra shipping or anything He just gave me an initial price and then sent it to me before I even paid him out of the you know goodness of his heart I guess so uh, Guys got to make something off this like I, I appreciate that he's giving me really good rates and stuff But I would feel horrible if he didn't make at least a little money off this So I'm, I'm gonna see what the difference is and pay him back for that But we got a big box of Australian goodies to look into uh, some PS1 games, some Game Boy games, some Amiibos, which is interesting. Uh, I don't know what's in the Amiibo bag. He showed me kind of a vague picture, and I can make some general guesses, but I don't know what's in that. So I'm going to take this off the table. I'm going to put it beside me. I'm not going to look at what's in it, and I will start pulling stuff out one at a time. And uh, I think I found the bag of Amiibos, so that's that's cool. Uh, let's Let's start by pulling out some Amiibos, I guess. Starting with, oh, what do we got here? The, the bag's a little bit wrapped around it. There it is. We have, ah, Pluduna. Cool. That is a really great figure. And her little statue thing is okay too. Uh, <laughs> I, I've never actually seen a Pluduna amiibo. That's, that's beautiful actually. Like this is a cool display piece. I like this. All I really know about her is she's the goddess from Kid Icarus and that the original game Kid Icarus in Japan was actually called Pollutina before they changed it to Kid Icarus for the West. Um, I don't remember her in Smash or anything though, so I, I couldn't tell you much about her, but that's a really nice figure. I'm definitely putting that up somewhere. That is cool. I like that. I'm not the biggest amiibo guy though. Like, you gotta understand, I only have like five, and there's a few here and there that I'm interested in. Like. I, I don't know what's in this bag, but I, I did see that a lot of it looked like Fire Emblem stuff, and there are two Fire Emblem Amiibos I do want. 
So maybe I will find the two I'm looking for in here. That'd be pretty cool. But I only have like five actual Amiibos. So getting a few of these is pretty cool. All right, I got a next one and we are looking at, oh, holy crap, Marth. All right, all right, all right. So you know how I said there was two Amiibos from Fire Emblem I wanted? Yeah, this guy's one of them. Uh, <laughs> Marth was my boy in Melee. Um, I, I don't own Melee, I wish I did. I tried to get it numerous times and kind of failed. I'm gonna have to bend that sword up a little bit. But um, Mars was kind of my boy. And I remember when Amiibos first launched with Smash on the Wii U and I was making a video with my college buddies on Smash on the Wii U and I was thinking, I gotta get myself an Amiibo just to show them off and see what they're all about. And I could have gotten this, I could have gotten Link being held up with a urine stream, which just looks awkward and bad. Or I could have gotten Marth, or uh, Samus. And I went with Samus because she's kind of my favorite Nintendo character. But I always kind of wanted Marth, and he sold out very, very quickly. And again, he's kind of my, like one of my favorite Smash characters. So this is really exciting to have. He's, he's one of the Amiibos I really wanted to get a hold of. Uh, so that's cool. Um, I kind of dislike Marth. <laughs> From, from where he stands in the Fire Emblem now that he's been in Smash though, because, you know, Smash introduced Fire Emblem to us through Marth and Roy, and the first thing anyone asked when the first Fire Emblem we got was, where's Marth and Roy? I want to play as Marth and Roy. Well, in Fire Emblem 7, you could play as Roy's dad. No, I want to play as Marth. I want to play as Roy in that order. But Marth hasn't had a game since like the Super Nintendo, and now he's shoved in everything, I think just to pander to the Smash audience really like he, his inclusion in Fire Emblem Awakening as like Lucina showing up saying I'm Marth and then five seconds later saying nope my name's actually Lucina it's like who was that for <laughs> that ruins your storytelling it's awkward writing uh, and now you got Fire Emblem engaged with the whole thing just let Marth rest in peace and retire he had his story he had several he was good we don't need him crammed in everything anymore I'm sorry but that is a cool amiibo it's what I'm really looking forward to. I am going to have to bend that sword, though. Okay, so pulling in our next amiibo we have, as I knock over the camera, I think that's Robin, or as I like to call him in the uh, Smash game that he showed up in. Who the hell is Robin? <laughs> because my character wasn't named Robin, and he didn't look like this. Uh, he was the Fire Emblem Awakening created character, although my character looks significantly different from this and had a different name. Uh, I don't know much about him as a Smash character because I don't play all that much Smash, but uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. Um, if I'm not uh, tipping my hand too much, I'm hoping that the other Smash uh, Fire Emblem character I want in here is in this bag, which is uh, Lady Corinne. Don't know anything about her, but love her figure. Uh, so that's one I'd like to get a hold of. But what's our next one? We have... Shulk! Nice! I like Shulk. I actually have a Shulk. Uh, my local GameStop broke street date to sell me a Shulk early once. Uh, so I actually already have Shulk, but uh, I'm a big fan of the Zeno series. I actually own almost all of it. Uh, the only games I don't have are Zeno Gear, Zeno Saga 3, and uh, Torna, the, the weird standalone expansion thing, but I love these games. Uh, huge open world RPGs. Well, the, the Zeno Blake ones are the you know, previous ones weren't that, but uh, love the Zeno series, so that's pretty cool. Excited to see Shulk again. All right, our next one is... Little Mac! Oh, that's really, really cool, actually. I'm a big fan of Punch-Out. Uh, if, if you remember my um, Animal Crossing streams that no one bothered to watch, I kind of took it upon myself to try and beat Punch-Out, like by playing one round every single night. I got really, really attached to Punch-Out. That's, that's a really, really fun game, and uh, this is a hard to find Amiibos, I understand, or at least it was for quite a while. Um, I remember he has like the ability to instant KO people, that's all I really remember about Little Mac, but I, I do love the NES game, so I'm cool with that. Alright, our next Amiibo is... Dark Pit. That's a cool gun. <laughs> that's about everything I have to say about Dark Pit right there, he's got a cool gun. I, I haven't actually played anything in Kid Icarus. I've, I played a little bit of the demo to the original game, but that's about it. So that's that's about the only bit of insight I can give you on that character. All right, our next character is... Oh, it's uh, the character they named after my grandpa. This is good old Ike. He was from Path to Radiance on the GameCube, which is one of the few Fire Emblem games I've not played. In fact, I've never even seen a copy. 
I'm going to have to find a copy at some point. Uh, either way, I played Radiant Dawn and it sucked. Uh, but Ike is kind of like the powerhouse uh, Smash Fire Emblem representative, as I remember. But that's about all I really know about him. Although I got to say, it's a nice figure. The, the cape curved around him, kind of blowing in the wind. Uh, the, the sword's a little bit wobbly. Might have to bend that a little bit outwards. But yeah, that's, a, that's actually a really, really solid looking figure. That'll look cool on a shelf somewhere. All right, our next one is Ness. The character I could never unlock in the original Smash because original Smash, Ness was hard to get. <laughs> but yeah, Ness. He's a cool character. I, I am a big fan of Earthbound. It's it's a neat series. I'm actually playing an RPG that I'm thinking about reviewing right now that was based on RP or RPGs, well, obviously, but it's based on Earthbound. Uh, so that's exciting, and I do like Ness. This this will be fun to put somewhere. Not sure where just yet. Following that up, we have... Uh... Oh, it's a squid. That might be a kid sometimes. Uh, I think these were sold specifically for Splatoon 2, which I own, but I, I bought Splatoon 2 specifically to play with someone on my Discord, and we never bothered doing that, so... And, and I, I played a little bit of Splatoon 2, I, I beat the story mode, but I found it to be really boring, and regardless of the gyro or the uh, standard controls, I could not play it to save my life. But it's a neat game, I'll, I'll respect. I, I respect Splatoon for what it is, I don't think I can actually enjoy it as a game, though. Uh, our next character is the Orange Inkling. I like this design, I've always liked the sort of tentacle bangs on, on Orange Inkling. Uh, she's a personal favorite design of mine. When I played Splatoon, this was basically the design I went for because I do quite like it. I think it's very, very stylish. Um, and hey, you know, maybe I can unlock some stuff in Splatoon 2 have I, if I ever play that again. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> All right, uh, next is Blue Inkling. I, I mean, it's, it's like the other two, except he's blue. I like the orange one best though. All right, we have about one more figure in here, and we have Marth. Oh wait, except it's not Marth because it's Lucina. Although she wants you to think she is for about two seconds in one cutscene before she gets called out on it. Because what was the point of that cutscene, seriously? <laughs> Although I will say her sword looks a lot more like the Falchion than Marth does, but yeah. Uh, either way, I, I like Lucina as a character. I just think they wrote her initial entrance as just Again, pandering and bad, but her figure looks quite stylish. I like that. Uh, un unfortunately, that's it for the amiibo bag. It's got some tears I could show off, I guess. Uh, although there is one one thing I want to bring up. I, I feel cheated slightly. Uh, when I saw a picture of this uh, and Vermilion sent it to me, I saw a picture of Legend of Zelda branded mints in there. <laughs> Where are the Zelda mints, man? <laughs> I I'm kidding, of course. But now we actually get to go to the games, which is kind of like the important part. Uh, so we're gonna start with this, which is, uh, oh, it's a case holding multiple things, so I gotta crack this open a little bit. So we got some Game Boy games, starting with Koro Koro Kirby. I actually already own this, uh, and weirdly enough, my gameplay video of this, which I actually played on a GameCube, is one of my most popular videos. I don't understand why my popular videos are popular, and why all my other videos never get seen. But uh, this is Kirby Tilt and Tumble. This is a weird cart because it's designed to basically be an original Game Boy cart, but it only works on a Game Boy Color and like Game Boy Advance. But like typically a Game Boy Color cart is designed in such a way that you can't lock it into a, a Game Boy, if I remember correctly. But this one is designed so that you can put it in an original Game Boy, it just won't work. Um, but if you're not familiar with Coral Coral Kirby, I made a review about it and I've made a gameplay video, which again is weirdly one of my most popular videos. It's a top-down game where Kirby is a ball that you have to like roll using a tilt sensor. And that's kind of your whole lot. It's a weird game. It's, it's an interesting curio. I'm not sure it's all that fun as a game, more than anything. But it's an interesting tech demo, if nothing else. All right, so following that up, we have Game Boy game number B, which I believe is Magic Knight Rayearth. Now, I'm not actually familiar with the IP of Magic Knight Rayearth, really. I played the Sega Saturn game in Japanese, and that was weirdly approachable, 
I don't think this version is though. I, I think this is a different game. It's very, very text heavy, so I'm not sure how playable it'll be, but it will be interesting to explore. So at some point I'll have to take a look at that. All right, our third game of the Game Boy variety is Metarot Kuwagata. Now, I actually already have this game. This was uh, Metabots 2, which was later ported to the Game Boy Advance as the one Metabots game we got in North America that actually played like a Metabots game because we only got three games. We got a weird reskin of a fighting game. We got this weird like 3D action shooter thing on the GameCube and then we had a really, really good RPG. And that RPG was in and of itself a remake of this game and then ironically got ported back to Japan and updated so that they got even more content we didn't get. <laughs> We, we just can't get the best version. But I'm a big fan of Metabots and Metarot. Uh, if I haven't shown it off, I will show it off now, but I've got this big um, collection of all the Metarot Kuigata versions. I think I'm only missing one, at least for the games that are playable region free. And that game is the North American weird fighting game thing. I, I think I've got every other one of them. And some of them, like Shin Gata, which I have boxed, is very, very rare. Some of them, like the English RPG that's based off this are very, very expensive as well. The fifth one is pretty hard to find. Uh, this one is really, really fun though, or, or the predecessor is, because it's weirdly playable in spite of not having any sort of um, translation for it officially. There, there isn't an official one now, and I recommend you play it. But you can totally play it without a translation because the world is very, very locked up, and as you advance, it slowly opens up more and more. But the game's kind of like Pokemon in the sense that you have these collectible robots that you can build piece by piece using heads, bodies, arms, legs uh, to dictate their attacks and statistics. And then you can make a team of three and have them fight other robots. And if you win fights, you get parts from your opponents. If they win, they get your parts, which are really, really nerve wracking. Um, if you ever play those games, it is an exercise in like safe stating and safe scumming if you can do it. Because some fights only have like one-of-a-kind items that are really, really good that you definitely want, but while there are definitely frustrating bits in Metarot, I have nothing but fond memories of it. It was an amazing anime that had a lot of really now quite famous animators and, and people who worked on it in the background sort of doing stuff. Uh, if I remember correctly, the Ninja House episode was animated by the person who did Gurren Lagann later on, which is kind of cool, which explains why that animation looks completely different from every other episode. But um, I, I digress. Uh, Metabots, it's very, very good. And I love it. And, and it's the Kuwagata version or Stag Beetle version. And Stag Beetles are the better Beetles, obviously. So, following that up, we have Hokuto no Ken. I'm not super familiar with Fist of the North Star. Like, I know it got a few games out in North America that completely changed the names of all the characters and stuff. Like. There was the Genesis Last Battle, where you played a character who I think they renamed to Erzok or something like that. Uh, I don't know much about Fist of the North Star, really. I think there was a Yakuza-style game that, that used Fist of the North Star characters as well, which I really ought to play because I like Yakuza a lot. Um, but it's big, burly anime dudes beating the hell out of each other. And on the GameCube, so that could, or GameCube Game Boy. That could be pretty fun. And I've got quite a lot of import Game Boy games. I think I've got like 200 of them, so that'll be that'll be a fun one to do. And for the last Game Boy game, we have uh, what I believe to be Pokemon Puzzle League, which is a really solid game. It's it's basically Tetris Attack, which is basically, you know, uh, Panel de Pawn, which is basically this. Uh, basically, you get a bunch of blocks, you have to rearrange them so that you can match certain numbers, and then you destroy them. And, and that's kind of how it works. It's, it's sort of a match, I think, for puzzle game. Uh, I'm bad at puzzle games, but these are really, really solid. I've not tried the Game Boy Color version, although I do have the Super Famicom version. Um, either way, this is actually one of the games that I've been most excited about in this. It's, it's not the game I'm excited about, but it's a really cool game. And for, what, $2 I paid for it, I'm pretty excited to have it. So that's really, really cool. All right, so now we come to the final four games. Uh, they are all PS1 RPGs, uh, which pretty much all my PS1 RPGs I owe thanks to this guy. Vermilion is super, super cool and 
pretty much all of my PS1 collection I own thanks to him and his awesome deals. So thank you once again. And we are starting with Chrono Cross. This is a really solid game. Uh, I know someone who absolutely loves this game. It's been recently remade. Um, I actually have a copy of this, except my copy is sealed. So this actually gives me a version to play without breaking that seal, so I can just hold on to it. So uh, that's exciting. This is effectively the sequel to Chrono Trigger, although there's basically no story connection as far as I remember. Um, the one thing this game really had that was very, very impressive, as I understand, was it had like 40 playable characters. And it had like a, a background program running to modify every character's dialogue depending on which character they were because they all had different dialects and stuff so that the game would basically regurgitate out. So like one character would speak with one accent, the other would speak with another, and they'd have like different idioms and sayings depending on which character. And that was apparently swapped out on the fly as I understand. That's a really neat feature. I can't imagine too many games using it and having that many characters to manage is kind of nightmarish, like the Saga games did that too, and that was not the best. But I've heard nothing but good things about Chrono Cross, and now that I have a version I can open up and play, maybe I'll get to do that. Uh, I've heard the music. The, the music in this game is absolutely killer. Alright. Following that, we have... Final Fantasy VIII! Final Fantasy VIII is a very good card game. That's about all I really remember about this game. Actually, um, I remember this game having some incredible, wildly broken mechanics in the judgment, or judgment, uh, the junction system. And the junction system was basically you go into a fight and you can siphon energy off of monsters, that's different elemental magics, and then you can use that as, as just your magic attacks. Or you can take it and apply it to your stats to give you massive stat boosts. And if you know where a specific monster is early on, you can pretty much max out your attack, like, an hour into the game and and there's a great fight where they, they give you the means to go into like this super hard boss fight early on but it's a hard boss fight but the longer you wait like as you level it scales massively above you i remember maxing out my stats the, the one time i played this and like the moment i got that fight i just jumped in killed him in one hit and got like the most powerful summon ever <laughs> um there's a lot i don't like about final fantasy 8 for one thing i don't really like final fantasies after six with the exception of Tactics Advance, um, mainly because I think they started focusing significantly more on style over substance. Uh, Final Fantasy VII I found to be really, really bad about that. Um, I, the, the main character, Squall, mostly talks with ellipses, and he's not a silent character, he just talks a lot in his head and monologues instead of actually talking. And, and you know, I'm someone who spent most of his life being mute, so I can sympathize, but he's not much of an interesting character. In, in fact, there's sort of like this weird parallels where you get like sent back in time and quantum leapt into the bodies of two other people that are telling a far more interesting story. And I, I remember this advice from grade four writing class. If your side characters have a more interesting story than your main characters, you're probably focusing on the wrong characters. I, I think the story of Laguna, his, his dad, spoilers, is a significantly more interesting story than his kid and his not quite sisters, almost sort of incestuous, not quite relationship. It, it was weird. Um, but I will say that the people who did the motion capture animation for this were, just did such a gorgeous job. There's this scene very early on where uh, Renoa here asks Squall to dance and he's not having any of it. And you can see their, their total personality just shown through their actions and movements and it is beautiful. Whoever did the motion capture in this game deserves a freaking award. Also, Man with a Machine Gun is such an amazing soundtrack. This, this game has some great music. Okay, so our next game is Final Fantasy VII. I think a lot of people like to call this the greatest game of all time, and I like to call it the embodiment of everything wrong with Final Fantasy. <laughs> I have so many problems with Final Fantasy VII. It's an important game, and I don't begrudge people who like it, but I cannot stand this game <laughs> or the characters in it. Um, I, I don't like that it went from Final Fantasy VI, which was a game with a very strong ensemble cast, to a cast of basically three people who are important to the story and only one of them ever joins your team for any manageable part of time. I, I appreciate the environmentalist themes, but I did not like the structure, the translation's a bit iffy, and there's, there's just so many things I just that just bug me about Final Fantasy VII. I might have to play this game again someday. 
but I do now own it physically as opposed to just on my PS3, so there is that. And the nice thing is, with Final Fantasy 7, or Final Fantasy 8, I now own all of the new Final Fantasy games for the PS1, with the exception of Tactics Advance, and I guess Vagrant Story, if you count that, because it's sort of tangentially Final Fantasy. Um, but yeah, I've got uh, 7, 8, and 9 now, so that's cool. I'm, I'm actually building up a pretty quality PS1 library, thanks to Vermillion, pretty much exclusively, because <laughs> I'm the one who's getting all his RPGs, and that's pretty great. Uh, but Final Fantasy VII, I don't care much for this game, I get why people like it, I just can't see it for beyond its, its serious glaring issues. So we've got the final game here, and as I said from the start, my Discord server kind of has a meme going, that he has two copies of this one game and I have zero copies of this one game. Well, he sold me this game, and I'm super, super stoked about it because... And I'll just bring Shulk up here because it's going to be relevant right about now. It's Xenogears. <laughs> I have always wanted a copy of Xenogears. I've heard so many really cool things about it. I think I've played a little bit of like a demo of it or something on PSN at one point. Because um, I, I swear I played it on my PSP for like two minutes or something. I, I swear, but I, I don't know where. Uh, either way, I've played Xenogears, or I've played, I've got Xenogears now. I'm thinking about maybe doing a, a like let's play of this honestly because I'm I'm kind of about to finish Robotrek and I kind of need a new RPG to stream through and this is pretty exciting and also I'm a big fan of the Zeno series I guess as of now I just need Zeno Saga 3 and Torna and I've got the entire set and that makes me happy um, but this was specifically why I bought all this like yeah getting Marth getting Polutina that's pretty cool. I guess another Shulk's all right. Xenogears. <laughs> that's that's what my eyes were on. That was what made this purchase absolutely worthwhile to me. I have wanted to copy this forever, and I think this makes my rather meager PS1 collection substantially better. And I am actually building up a pretty solid RPG library, pretty much exclusively because of Vermillion. So once again, shoutouts to Vermillion. Thank you. I am going to have to send you more money because seriously, I cannot let what I paid slide for, especially how much shipping you paid for this, sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's what I've got. Um, also, $6 cookies, just for a joke. <laughs> but uh, this, this has been Xenogears, I'm super excited to play this. Uh, might be my next Let's Play, let's, let's find out on, on my Twitch, so go check out there. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and you know, if you did, follow the stream to see me stream stuff on Twitch, uh, check out and subscribe more stuff on my YouTube channel, see more stuff there. You can clearly see that I'm trembling right now and tripping on my words because I'm so excited I've got this. Oh, I want to play it so bad. Um, and if you really want to make my day, check out the show's PayPal or Patreon. Support the show any way you can so that I can continue to do what I do to the best of my ability, which in this case is pay significantly more for this stuff because what I paid for all this was an absolute crime and I need to send for a million more money. Seriously, dude. <laughs> I, I gotta get you a little bit more for all this because this is great. Um, and you know, if, if you wanna, you know, send me some games, that would be definitely, definitely appreciated. Or you know, if you've got games you wanna sell at a significantly low price because my channel does not get as many views as I'd like it to, you know, that too is also pretty cool. And you know, if you just wanna share it with people, that's awesome too because seriously, Sharing is caring, and I care an awful lot about you people and showing off awesome games. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this this look into an awesome little purchase that I paid way too little for, and I gotta fix that. Um, and and some of the cool stuff I got, and my ever growing PS1 library, which has been a goal for me this year to work on my PS1 and Genesis library. Uh, I'm hoping to have a new. Um, loot video up soon. I'm just doing some stuff in between now and then, but uh, hopefully, hopefully soon. And maybe a collection video as well. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed. Hope you have a fantastic day, and I hope to see you next time. Peace out, Internet.